Good Breakfast Show here on S3. It's time for us to catch some waves because Wavescape, it is starting today from the 1st to the 11th of March and you want to, you want to hang around for it. Indeed, Ryle is actually standing by with the Paralympics coach. Let's take a look. Yes, what is up, you beautiful people? Welcome to the office. And it's my favorite office, Nature Boy's home. It's the ocean, but it's not about me this morning. It's about someone special, an absolute legend when it comes to the surf game. Talking about three decades of dominating the surf. On top of that, she's also a para surf coach and recently the 2021 Surfing SA Women's Champion. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let me introduce you to Tasha Mintasti. Tasha, how are you doing this morning? How's it? <laughs> it's so good to chat to you, of course. Yeah. I'm not only going to be interviewing you, but I'm also going to maybe steal some tips because my surf game is a little bit questionable at the moment. I know you're the perfect person for it. But before we get into that, I want to chat to you about your love for the ocean. Obviously, for many of us, it's an incredible space that we all get to share and love. For you, there's a deeper connection and you're using that connection to help people both with mental issues as well as any sort of disabilities. Talk to me about that amazing uh, um, achievement and amazing like work that you're doing. Yeah, thank you, Raul. I'm just, uh, I've got to say I'm so blessed, you know, to, to have the ocean as my sanctuary sanctuary ready is just so important but 30 years of surfing and what I've learned over the time is that it is therapeutic the ocean heals and I've been very lucky to be able to transition from professional surfing to now taking people into the water and not just teaching them how to surf teaching them how to feel confident in the water we're in South Africa there's a lot of people that don't know how to swim there's a lot of people that haven't had the opportunity to get into the ocean I'm here to try and make a change and a positive change in that and really just by connecting to the ocean you're reconnecting to yourself and I'm sure you feel that when you go surfing absolutely resonate with everything you're <laughs> saying right now and I love the fact that you mentioned especially in South Africa how important it is to get people to be comfortable in the ocean there's so many adults out there that are petrified and they pass that on to their kids so the work that you're doing I can't say thank you enough because you're obviously empowering our nation at the same time and drawing it back to one of our loves and speaking of loves obviously we spoke about the connection that you have with the ocean which is so so mighty an organization and a brand like Wavescape that's doing this festival, which is happening at the beginning of March, it's something incredible. But for you, why is it so important to have these festivals, raise awareness for the ocean, as well as kind of bring the community together? Wavescape has been doing the Surf and Ocean Festival for many years. I'm sure they're going into their 13th or 14th year, maybe even longer. I originally got involved because it was free surf films on the beach, you know, and it's grown and evolved since then. They now do the artboard auction which auctions off surfboards that artists have helped paint and create on them but it raises fund for funds for various ocean-minded charities and and yeah wavescape is just all about surf community it's about bringing people together it's about educating people about not just surfing the ocean respecting the ocean beach cleanups how do you recycle reduce reuse there's just so much education in it and it's cool because it's all about surfing the ocean <laughs> the beach I love that it is cool in Edom Zanzi. Now we're talking to the legend of course and I can't go without chatting to her about helping me with some tips when it comes to surfing. So can I put you on the spot, maybe give us some tips and also I want to chat to you about the competition itself because it's not just the fact that you're teaching people to swim, you and your competition element and mindset, you've got to dominate, you've got to like really own the beach. Take me through the process firstly of how to get onto a surfboard and then maybe we can chat about when you're at the very top level and you maybe become a champion, what it really takes to score the points to make it big. I think the key focus is you've got to spend time in the water. Our playing field is always changing. It's not a soccer field, it's not a rugby field. Waves are constantly coming in, but they're different every single time, you know. So it's really about spending time in the water. From a pop-up point of view, I need to see that technique a little bit. Okay. But the key factor is always, number one, don't hesitate. Number two, keep looking in the direction that you want to go. Because when we pop up, we doubt ourselves, we look down at our feet, we fall forward. If we just look where we want to go, which is pretty much a life skill, always look forward, always keep looking forward, pushing forward, taking that step forward. But even with surfing, you want to look where you want to go, and that's how you get your flow in the water. And then your changes slightly as your skill level adapts and gets better but the biggest thing is we've got to practice we've got to be in the surf we've got to be in the ocean and we've got to keep getting comfortable and, and getting more used to it i love that i love the tips that you're giving i know personal question to you maybe i always ask this when it comes to surfers because everyone has a different connection with the ocean but for you when you get into that competition space and you really need to deliver 
Are you preempting the moves that you're going to deliver on the wave, or are you kind of just feeling it and just whatever happens, happens? <laughs> <laughs> there is visualization in a big way, especially at your higher, more advanced technical levels. There's a lot of video analysis, so watching yourself surf. And even after 30 years, when that turn feels really good and you watch it, it doesn't always look as good as it felt, <laughs> but I think that's what the stoke of surfing is all about. But yeah, uh, visualization is key. S assessing the conditions, knowing what the waves are doing for the day and visualizing what you can do on those waves is a big factor. And then it's really about managing your mind, managing your nerves and, um, and just really having that strong mental ability to, to push through. Oh, I couldn't have said it any better, ladies and gentlemen, the legend herself, Tasha Mentasti. And of course, thank you so much for the tips. Thank you so much for what you're doing in the ocean. And beyond that, it's clearly not just a surfboard. It's clearly not just an ocean. There's a deeper meaning and you raise and allowing that communication to come through so, so strongly. So I can't thank you enough for that. Yeah, you're welcome. And thank you for having me. But now let's go surf. Kawabanga. <laughs> let's go surf. <laughs> oh, come on. You've got to love it. What better way to start a Tuesday morning than out at the beach for the love of the ocean? Wavescape is back. But more with Ryle uh, over at the beach. But later on, he's going to be doing some, you know, yogi stuff, some yoga moves with Tammy, the Cape Yoga Girl.